reasons for not writing poetry, short-sightedness, interest in chess, mother, zeitgeist, character and personality, dramatic skills, Carlos, affinity with Dickens, repressed sexuality, car accident, second car accident, smoking, life in boarding houses, Oblomovism, interest in cricket, interest in cinema, interest in Nietzsche, Nazism, amorous interludes, family ties, shyness, dislike of France and French, dislike of Germany and Germans, appearance, holiday in Margate, golf, tasting clothes, health, electroconvulsive treatments, moralistic pose, Freud, death of several friends, misogyny, football, career problems, character changes, impossibility of domestic life, finances, holiday in Greece, cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, so this is a book of mine which came out seven years ago. I'm going to read one more from it. Um, I was looking at it again recently and I like quite a lot of what's in it. Um, so I thought I'd read a couple tonight. That's the first one. This will be the second and last one. It's called Daniel Bruhl, who's a young German actor who appeared in the films Goodbye Lenin and The Edu Educators. We are no longer in love, and that absence is not like a leg or arm lost or something. It's like we never were in love. We meet though still quite frequently, being, when we do, either annoyed or casual toward one another. My friend Stuart can't understand why we continue to go out if we are no longer in love, and neither can I, unless we still are in love, just unable to admit it now for, I don't know, maybe world economic reasons. <coughs> so this is a new pamphlet from um, a press called a bad chip in Liverpool. I'm going to read several from this. This one's called The Statesman. Who even knows what a statesman does besides attending lunches and dinners and probably giving the occasional speech this statesman makes soup for the, for the homeless, not in his opulently decor decorated office, but in the family kitchen, which isn't opulent, but is sizable nevertheless and north facing, so he gets the sun in the morning. A renowned scholar in his youth and young manhood, the slow drift from learning in later years is cause for the statesman of frequent regret. Also anxiety, which is much less frequent, and anxiety when it comes perhaps compounded by the recent doubts felt towards the faith he was raised in, with work the main distraction available at his posting, the statesman works hard only stopping for comfort breaks. The statesman pays no heed to the flashbulbs popping, occupied as he is with thoughts of the ambassador and the difficulty of avoiding his birthday party though there's the facts finding mission to welcome first. The old men congregate in the main square to drink schnapps and comment on passers-by. Sometimes the statesman joins them incognito and pretends to be an artisan visiting relatives up from the country. The curtains are drawn early here, the day seen off at the earliest opportunity. Night time is a time of companionable solitude, but no games of scrabble now. At night the bus window is like a mirror for the bald men to remember the time before baldness. Do you remember that time, Richard? Yes, there was much laughter and we sang often. Two people can be married, the statesman knows, to two different people other than each other. Or those four people in total could each be single, maybe looking for someone or happy alone. Long into the night, the statesman labours to make what's on the page match his feelings. At 22, it would have caused him no trouble. Maybe 45 is too old for love notes. By his desk outside the statesman's office, the secretary thinks he sounds happy today before entering the corridor where the laughter becomes fainter. 
On page 76, a line asks what faith would mean without understanding, startling the statesman. Due to that and associated questions having recently been preoccupying him very much, yet not to the extent of thinking to investigate what anyone else might have said on the matter. Maybe the book could be memorised. Maybe the book could be memorised in a translation the statesman doesn't understand. Both undoubtedly must be possible. Richard, you've come on in the world, son, mixing with important statesmen now, albeit once very secretive about what they do, and you with only one A and two Bs at GCSE. The statesman thinks about moving the desk, thinking he'd prefer to sit facing the window. He estimates the job would be done in 10 minutes, then revises that guess, thinking it would take longer. Rumours spread amongst the staff of rebels planning to overthrow the government. The statesman overhears the rumours and hopes fervently that they are true. The stranger with the hands that seem almost too long to be beautiful but not quite, one day asks the states statesman to kiss her, just as his secretary calls him away. 4.27am sees the statesman looking out from his balcony over the expanse of his grounds. Why did I choose this life, he wonders, with no one planning to assassinate him? Selected translations. 1. The front door key is lost, but there is a spare key in the shed behind the very high locked back garden gate. Much too high for a fat man to climb. Tomorrow there will be a spare key with the neighbour. 2. I need to get organised. I need to get organised. Organised. Do you not remember those tea towels from the 1980s? No. 3. Skinner. Times 10. Until you receive a reply. Until the neighbour bangs on the wall. Until you remember work in the morning and so decide to go to bed. Until you think of a more interesting way to pass the time. Until the sky folds in like a sheet of paper becoming a swan or a little hat. 4. The fat man on holiday takes a photo of the monument and relaxes on the beach and visits the home of the famous artist and has dinner in a fancy restaurant without leaving a tip. 5. For about 10 minutes this went on and it seemed like fun and he wished that he could join in but by the time he thought of the contribution he was happy with everyone had left to go and fly kites on the hill. 6. Cigarettes abandoned at 21 for a pipe then seemed like an unusual decision in terms of economics though less so. 7. Cryptic click and coffee time. There may be other types of crossword besides these. If there are, I don't know about them. First epilogue. Not as good as the second epilogue, most people said. Though without being able to reach a consensus on precisely how not good it was or what let it down. Second epilogue. See above. 8. Did we romp in the hot tub? Coyly, I'll never tell. This much you can know, however, our love is the real deal. All my life I've been searching for someone like her slash him. Megan Fox, Sonnet. Megan Fox, did you just get married? I hope you did, because movie stardom can be a lonely game. You've been photographed so often, like maybe 10,000 times or something, Megan. Do you keep the photos in albums and look through them occasionally? I don't know if you're real or not, Megan Fox. I saw Jennifer's body and thought it wasn't sure what kind of movie it wanted to be, but was okay, basically. Oh, but Megan, that doubt. I just don't know what to do with it. I like Transformers, but not that other film based on the book. <laughs> Why always me? One. Mario Balotelli. <laughs> you wanted to see what a women's prison was like. So you drove into the grounds of one when you passed one with the gate left open. What was it like, Mario? And was your brother as curious, sat there with you in the high-powered Mercedes? Or was it all your idea, Mario? 
Would your brother have preferred to have just gone home? What did you expect to find, Mario, in the grounds of the women's prison in Brescia, in the region of Lombardy, in northern Italy, eh, Mario? Calagero were pressed, he said. We saw a high-powered Mercedes coupe come through the gates with two lads on board, and after a few minutes we realised Balotelli was one of them. They were questioned for 30 minutes to get their details, and by the end both were frightened. Balotelli said he was sorry. They said they had seen the gate was open and went in without knowing that you need special permission to visit a jail. They added they were specially curious at the fact it was a women's prison. Only more questions, Mario. You found only more questions. Two. Almost a year later, with international teammates Gigi Buffon and manager Cesare Prandelli, he visited another prison the Siliziano prison in Florence, to deliver to the inmates some inspirational words and to talk to them about your iPod. <laughs> Why prisons, Mario? It's not women's prisons, it seems, rather it's prisons in general that fascinate you, Mario. Why? <laughs> Three. On the football field you are a king. On the football field you wheel and loop like a swallow. The football field is no prison. The opposing team no fit jailer for you, Mario. One overhead kick could open any lock. One dazzling run into the opponent's box could too open any lock. One long range pass splitting their side in half as well, that could open any lock. And so on and so on. On the football field you are free. For what's off the field, Mario? We see you a prisoner of your fortune. Dear Mario, I hope this letter finds you well, and quite well. I just wanted to drop you a line to thank you for your visit to Siliciano last month. <laughs> I enjoyed your talk very much. I'm a big fan of yours, Mario. I find you an inspiration. I like the way you seem never to let things get you down for long and how you always bounce back from the disappointments of life and sometimes throw at us. My life has contained many such disappointments recently, Mario. When you visited, I thought it was extremely interesting to hear you talk about your iPod. I was very glad that, that, that when waiting to take the pitch to Spain last month, you were not, as the press has said, just listening to a selection of your favourite songs, but were actually, in fact, checking the results of the other matches taking place that night. I have long wondered which albums are on your iPod, Mario. I like the English bands. You will understand that my current situation makes it difficult for me to keep on trend as far as music goes. However, I do what I can. That I currently find myself resident here, Mario, seems like someone's idea of a very bad joke to me. I assure you. I'm a person of respectability and high social status. I have worked hard all my life and never done anyone any harm. When I get out of here, you must please do me the honour of paying me and my beautiful family a visit at our hillside villa. Please ignore anything you may have read about my case in the newspapers, Mario. Journalists are lying shits. I had no idea what my accountants were up to. How are you finding Manchester, Mario? I am following your progress with Manchester City very interestedly. I think Mancini is a good man. I've never been to Manchester, but from what I read, I think it will not be the place for me. However, I hope Manchester is treating you well. Perhaps if I am ever in Manchester we can meet up. That said though, I don't know why I would ever be in Manchester. <laughs> anyway, thanks once again for the visit. Please take care. It's the last bar telephone man. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Balotelli got on my tram, pretended he was an inspector and asked everyone to show him their tickets. Mario Balotelli knocked on my grand's front door to deliver her her dinner from Meals on Wheels. 
Mario Balotelli paid my fine for me at Manchester's John Ryland's University Library. <laughs> Mario Balotelli and his Bentley drove after the bus that I missed and forced it to stop, allowing me to board. Mario Balotelli put in a good word for me with Diane and suggested she give me a chance. <laughs> Mario Balotelli is responsible for an increase to growth and prosperity in the United Kingdom. Mario Balotelli followed me around for a day, commentating on everything that I did in song. Mario Balotelli bought a home tattooing kit from Argos and specialised in daggers, dripping blood with the snake wraps around them. Mario Balotelli transferred over to me the points on his Waterstones loyalty card. <laughs> Mario Balotelli explained to me the bit in the enigma of capital that I struggled to get my head around. Mario Balotelli guessed correctly which was the £250,000 box on Deal or No Deal, whilst I got it wrong. Mario Balotelli told everyone going into a screening of the girl with the dragon tattoo how the film ends. <laughs> but it wasn't the real ending he was telling them. Mario Balotelli writes my status updates for me on Facebook. Though lately they haven't been that good, so I'm thinking of going back to writing them myself. <laughs> Mario Balotelli occupied Wall Street. <laughs> Man with a seagull on head. Everyone is bored. Those who aren't bored even are bored. Be bored somewhere else, why don't you? Better that than being bored here. Seriously. Your boredom is infectious and it's bringing me down. Choose some other location, please, to be bored in. There must be at least five places you could be besides here. Go to one of them. This age of boredom. It will be looked back upon by future generations who will wonder, however did they stand it? Games of dominoes nightly. Sorry, but you know how it is. Boredom eats the soul, and not quickly. <laughs> Three more from this. <coughs> Coronation Street. One. Going back to America, Carla and Peter, at departures, are in a rush. Here's sign out. One teary farewell later, the front door is opening at Deirdre and Ken's, Si and Peter stepping in, Carla leaving, alone. When did Carla and Peter go to America in the first place, though? Two, skidding to a halt, the cyclist raises dust in the street, confronted by two cabbies both angry and approximately 30 lollipop men. Something is going down, but an apology from Steve seems to sort things right out. Three, turkeys for sale, says the sign, but no one's buying. Then Kirk and the other lads strike a deal and things start to look up. Four, more doors opening, people stepping through them. First, Eileen, then Chesney. Eileen saying, my son, how could you? I thought you were a friend and, anyway, you're old enough to be his mum. Meanwhile, a few houses down. Stay away from my sister, Tyrone. I'm warning you. Tyrone seeming shaken. <laughs> okay, so I'll just do one more from this. Uh, manifesto number one, it's called. Mistake, a quick drink. <clears throat> Manifesto number one. One, forget what you were going to write. Two, forget that you were going to write anything. Three, remember that you're due to meet Sherilyn in an hour. Four, forget where. Five, remember you have no intention of learning to drive ever. Six, forget what it was like before Tesco Metro opened down the road. Seven, forget what you tried to remember but forgot again then. Eight, remember it. Nine, forget the trips of the theatre you made together. Ten, remember the theatre. Eleven, forget the thrill of United Efforts. Twelve, remember the placard and the precise wording. Thirteen, forget that writing is not enough. 14. Remember saying what you wanted and not fearing the consequences. 15. Forget that God exists. 16. Forget you forgot that book. 17. Remember freedom of religious observance. 18. 
remember entertainment and uphold this as the principle of principles. 19, remember your passports. 20, remember your euros. 21, forget the time delay meaning writing and doing are different and always will be. 22, remember how pointless it felt reading poetry when your city was on fire. 23, remember the good feeling following the demo in support of local businesses. 24, forget politics. 25, remember entertainment. 26, forget your first degree, erase it from history, conspire with the others who rewrite history as the history they want. 27, remember the ambition of political poetry and political art. 28, forget entertainment. 29, forget turning history into a good night out. 30, remember how all things have their root economics. 31, remember what Sherilyn said about this that time. 32, remember reading Man at Leisure on the train home from Ely. 33, forget living poetically though. 34, remember it again a moment later. 35, forget those without the luxury of living poetically. 36, remember writing. 37, forget writing. 38, forget even how to write. 39, forget also why one should write. <coughs>